All right, let's take a look. President-elect Joe Biden, this is dead naming, it's currently President Joe Biden, will take 17 executive orders on day one. On his first day in office, Biden plans to issue 17 executive orders, presidential memoranda, and agency directives from directing the COVID-19 pandemic response to canceling the Keystone XL pipeline. Nine of the 17 actions directly reverse outgoing President Donald Trump's policies. Okay, so on coronavirus, launches a 100 days masking challenge. Wait, challenge? Are we, it's like a TikTok thing? Okay. Asking Americans to wear masks for 100 days requires masks and physical distancing in federal buildings on federal lands and by government contractors and urges state and local governments to do the same. So through executive action, um, Joe Biden doesn't have the authority to enforce a mask mandate everywhere, only on federal property and on, um, on things which are regulated by the federal government, which means public transportation like buses and planes and, of course, federal buildings. So this is fairly limited, but getting that requirement on, on uh, planes and buses is going to be helpful. And then we have another one on coronavirus. This one's a reversal. Stops the United States withdrawal from the WHO with Dr. Fauci becoming the head of the delegation to the WHO. That's probably good. That's definitely good. It's the WHO. The Trump literally just le left it. He was, he was mad. He's mad, mad boy. Mad sad boy. Um, wait, Tim responded? I don't know. Anyway. Nice back in the WHO. Okay. Additionally on coronavirus, creates the position of COVID-19 response coordinator, reporting directly to Biden, and managing efforts to produce and distribute vaccines and medical equipment. Good, great, sounds reasonable. Okay. Extends the existing nationwide moratorium on evictions and foreclosures until at least March 31st. This is good. If you recall correctly, the national moratorium would also be extended by that big... Um, that big uh, stimulus bill that he's trying to put through the uh, through through Congress, and that would extend it way 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 further. I think to like September, but through executive action, he would do it here in March, and uh, extends the existing pause on student loan payments and interest for Americans with federal student loans until at least September thirtieth. Damn, all the way to like the end of the year. Whew. Then we have some um, overturns of Trump policy. Rejoin the Paris Climate Accord, a process that'll take thirty days. Obvious, straightforward. Uh, cancels the Keystone XL pipeline and directs agencies to review and reverse more than 100 Trump actions on the environment. This seems straightforward. Everything that Trump did with regard to the environment was uh, pro-corporate oligopoly, uh, pro-corporate like corporate profits, anti-America, anti-American health, anti-American land. So this makes sense to me. Um, rescinds Trump's administra uh, the Trump administration's 1776 commission, directs agencies to review their actions to ensure racial equity. Yeah, the 1776 commission was literally just a component to propagandizing. Like, it, it, w it was literally just like, uh, uh, you say that uh, America's roots are uh, founded in uh, slavery, but <laughs> actually it's founded in freedom. Like, yeah, it's just fascism. It is, it is the fascist curriculum. Wasn't Charlie Kirk going to be on it? Yeah. Um, Hassan at 115K? Good. I'm happy. Dude, sometimes people come in here and they're like, uh, Hassan has so many viewers. That's fucking rad, dude. I'm really, really glad that the default political station for Twitch, like, gamer dude bros is Hassan. I think that's amazing, okay? Because it could have very well been the case that Twitch went the same direction as YouTube and the largest political figures on that platform are all, like, skeptic, enlightened, centrist, like crypto nazis okay but that didn't happen and i'm happy and I'll, I'll remain eternally happy about that um okay all right Pro um another one prevents workplace discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity i this is th some pretty obvious shit to me requires non-citizens to be included in the census and apportionment of congressional representatives this makes perfect sense to me okay like perfect 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 sense okay so let me explain why. So this was an over, this is an overturn. Okay. So non-citizens, this doesn't mean illegal immigrants. This just means non-citizens could be legal or illegal immigrants. It doesn't matter. Um, are a part of a state. They're a part of the state. They're a part of the state's economy. Los Angeles is not Los Angeles without its immigrant population. It's an essential component of Los Angeles. If you want to know Los Angeles, if you want to know what it's like, what its demographics are like, and what like the tax like dividends that should be given, everything about LA, you need to include non-citizens. It's very, very simple. You can't you can't ignore that. 
some more reversals. Uh, oh, no, wait. Hold on. Uh, not a reversal. Fortifies DACA after Trump's efforts to undo protections for undocumented people brought into the country as children. Sounds great to me. DACA's good. We should do more than DACA, but DACA's a good holdover. Um, and then here are some reversals. Reverses the Trump administration's restrictions on U.S. entry for passport holders for seven major uh, Muslim-majority companies. Uh, <sighs> countries. So we're undoing the Muslim ban. Great. Undoes Trump, uh, Trump's expansion of immigration enforcement within the United States. Fantastic. Speaking, by the way, since Tim Pool seems to care so much about um, national security, I wonder what Tim Pool thinks about ICE and the Department of Homeland Security. Um, you know, I, I, it's interesting to me. Halts construction of the border wall by terminating the national emergency declaration used to fund it. Good. This was, by the way, this was insanely fucking authoritarian. Donald Trump unilaterally using the executive um, branch to, like, divert funding over to the wall. This was, like, an unbelievable um, circumnavigation of, like, democracy and the traditional democratic process. Uh, expands deferrals of deportation and work authorizations for... Liberians with a safe haven in the United States until June 30th, 2022. Okay, I, I'm sure this is some specific thing. Uh, ethics. Requires executive branch appointees to sign an ethics pledge, barring them from acting in personal interest and requiring them to uphold the independence of the Department of Justice. I don't know how much that's actually going to do, but that's a good sentiment, I suppose. And then finally, an overturn. Directs OMB director to develop recommendations to modernize regulatory review and undo, undoes Trump's regulatory approvals process. This is all super, super, super important to me. I feel like the path forward to socialism, which is, again, I know a lot of you fucking suck damn shitters are in here uh, gunking up my community with your uh, fervent liberalism. But the end goal here, ideally socialism, at least I would certainly like that. And I think it's really, really, really important to be able to have those like it's like um, Maslow's hierarchy of of shit. Okay, it's like it's like this. Okay, you have like you have the 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 you have the the triangle. Okay, you have a very good triangle. Okay, you've got a very 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 good triangle. Okay, and the the issue is okay, the society that we want is like up here. We want the peak. All right, but the issue is that conservatives and fascists in this country are keeping us down here at like the second from lowest level, okay? And as long as there's room to go without crossing the, the socialism threshold, okay? This is the socialism threshold right here, all right? I'm just gonna call it the S-T. As long as there's room to go up from the socialism threshold, you're never going to be able to convince normies that socialism is necessary. Like, if you're talking to a liberal, a liberal, you want to explain what the problems with this country are, most of the obvious problems in this country are things that Republicans are the most aggre aggressive obstructionists on, okay? Like, if you like, if you want to talk to a liberal right now about improving the country, how do you, like, r like right now, the, the people keeping this country from being better are most evidently the Republicans. And as long as that remains the case, it's hard to make an argument for socialism. What problems are there with our health care? Well, we could fix that with a public option, which Biden wants to recommend. What problems are there with, like, um, our tax rates? Well, we could fix that under capitalism, could we? What problems are there with our military-industrial complex? We could fix that, blah, blah, blah. Like, all of these things can be fixed under capitalism. You can make a better capitalism. There are countries that do capitalism better than America when it comes to, like, the well-being of their citizenry. But you're always going to run up against, like, that, that gap. There's only so much you can do under capitalism because at the end of the day, you're fighting against the interests of the people with the most power in society. As long as society is being controlled by people who have a different set of interests than you, the bourgeois, then you're not going to be able to peak past that point. You want to. You want to break through and get up to that peak. But you can't do it unless you move up. So I say we need to focus on these base ass, these simple base level problems so we can convince people that there's something to reach past that, you know? It's like, um, how do I put this? Okay. Have you, you've had a, a really good meal in your life, right? Maybe you have, maybe you're a chef and you can cook real nice. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is pseudoscientific. What the fuck does that have to do with what I'm talking about right now? You've probably had a good steak at some point in your life or like some good meal, like a really, really nice meal, okay? Imagine that, that like, you, imagine like you're like uh, super poor, okay? And you've got a poor friend, all right? And you both can barely make it by. You're like eating, you're like finding old bean cans and like stabbing them open with 
your your hobo knife and like trying to drink. Yeah, like really bad time. Okay, just not good. Okay, that's your life. All right. If you're in that position, how effectively do you think you're going to be able to lay out an argument for what needs to be done so that you can have like a delicious, juicy steak? It's probably not going to sell. You talk to your average person who's hungry and poor, they're not fixated on luxury. They're fixated on making it buy. That's the thing. If a person's in really dire straits, they want like subsistence needs. Like, it's really hard to make these arguments. Like, what needs to be done in order to get that steak? Well, you have to do some really complicated stuff. You need like the proletarian revolution stuff. And then like the guy's going to be like, no, I don't, I don't care. That's a lot of effort for, I, I just want, I just want a microwave to heat my beans in, okay? I want a microwave to heat my beans and I want cheese to melt on top of them. And it's going to be beans and cheese and maybe a little bit of rice, okay? That's what I want. As long as people don't have much, it's hard to sell them in the complexities necessary to arrive at more. Now, that's not always the case because socialism is often popular with the poor, but socialism is typically popular in, with the, amongst the poor in countries that have like better class consciousness than America. In America, we have like pathetic level of class consciousness like even the poorest and most de you know deprived americans are pretty bad at it's not their fault it's how our country works but yeah are are, are pretty in old i think to the way all this functions but we'll get them there okay we're gonna we're gonna cheer when biden does some cool stuff and then we're gonna make fun of him at all times when he does bad stuff which will also happen probably pretty often um, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun and it's gonna be good.